What's happening everyone, my name is Alex and welcome back to a new review. For today we have another super affordable so-called bezel-less phone. This time around we have one made by Liago and this one is called the Kika Mix and it costs somewhere around $110. So what do we get for that price? Well, first of all, we get a phone that doesn't look too bad. However, the back and the sides of the phone are actually made out of plastic. So you're not going to get that premium feel that we've seen for other um, so-called bezel-less phones this year. And talking about those bezels, well, we can't really call this phone a bezel-less phone because we have rather large bezels all around the screen. The 5.5-inch screen is an IPS panel that has a resolution of 1080p. Now, even though the phone is quite cheap, the screen is not bad at all. So the colors are nice and vibrant and the viewing angles are really good, but the screen doesn't seem to get that bright so you can actually see it in direct sunlight, which is quite normal for a phone this cheap. But leaving that aside, the touch screen sensitivity is quite good and you can actually touch the screen in five places in the same time and the screen will register. So realistically, the screen looks quite good for a phone that costs only about $110. At the bottom of the screen we also have the navigation buttons and those can be moved around from the software and we also have a physical button that's also a fingerprint scanner. The fingerprint scanner is quite good, however not the fastest that we've seen, but once again um, considering the price of the phone I think that's um, good enough. So if you want to unlock the phone you just touch the fingerprint scanner and the phone um, will unlock and the screen will turn on. And that um, fingerprint scanner can also be used as a back button or as a home button if you hold it pressed for a couple of seconds. We also have a 13 megapixel camera sitting at the bottom left corner of the device and because it's sitting at the bottom every time you want to take a selfie you have to turn the phone around so you can't just um, take it as a regular phone you always have to turn the phone around. Now the quality from the pictures even though we have a 13 megapixel sensor is not great and all the pictures that I took even the ones that um, had plenty of light well they kind of turned out blurry so the quality from the front facing camera it's not the best. And some of you are probably wondering, where is the proximity and the light sensor? Well, we don't have a proximity or a light sensor and as a matter of fact, we don't really have that many sensors, which is quite normal for a phone this cheap. So whenever you are making a phone call, the phone will use the accelerometer to turn off the screen. So whenever you put the phone to your ear, the screen will turn off. Now, the problem is when you take off the phone from your ear. So if you do this, the screen will stay off. And that could become annoying mostly if you're making a phone call and you have to enter like credit card information and so on. So that could possibly be a bug and uh, hopefully it can be resolved in a software update. But as of now, whenever you take the phone off from your ear, the screen will not come back on and you have to press the power button to actually get the screen to come back on. So what else is this phone missing? Well, we are missing the 3.5mm audio jack. However, the phone does come with some USB-C headphones, but the headphones don't sound that great. I mean, there is so much bass that you can't really hear anything else. So definitely not the best headphones. And we don't get an adapter from USB-C to a 3.5mm audio jack. So you're gonna have to buy your own. But on the bright side, we get um, a silicone case for the phone, which is a good thing because otherwise it would be kind of difficult to find a case for this phone. Something else that's a bit different is the positioning of the speaker. So with most phones, we get a speaker um, somewhere around the top of the screen. Well, not with this phone. Um, the speaker is actually sitting all the way at the top. So it is a bit different um, when you're making phone calls because um, the speaker is not touching your ear. The speaker is kind of pointing up. In the same time, whenever you're using the speakers, like the phone speakers, you get dual speakers because we have a speaker at the bottom and then the speaker at the top is also being used for that. But the speakers don't get that loud. So if you're in a very noisy environment, well, it's going to be a bit difficult to actually listen to what's happening on the phone. And we are moving on to the back of the device. So on the back there we have the flash, we have a 13 megapixel camera and we also have a 2 megapixel camera. But like most phones that we've seen from China, mostly the cheaper ones, the second camera is absolutely useless. So technically you have the ability to take pictures with that um, cool bokeh effect, but in reality all the pictures that you are going to take with the bokeh effect look horrible. So just um, forget that you have the second camera on the back of this device. As for the pictures that you're going to take with the main camera on the back of this device, well, they're far, far from exceptional. So first of all, I wish the colors would have been a bit um, more saturated. I wish the pictures would have had um, a bit more detail and the dynamic range needs to be improved. So overall, the pictures are kind of below average, um, in my opinion. As for the low uh, light pictures, well, you're better off not to take any. 
For other specs, we have the MediaTek 6750T, which is an octa-core CPU clocked at 1.5 GHz. We have 3 GB of RAM and 32 GB of internal storage, and luckily the internal storage can also be expanded with an SD card. So this phone can take either two SIM cards or a SIM card and an SD card. We also have a 3000 milliamp battery, but as we all know that MediaTek 6750 is not um, that power efficient. So you're kind of gonna be able to make it through an entire day and get about three to four hours of screen on time. I can't really say exactly how much screen on time um, you will get because the phone doesn't display um, the screen on time. But yeah, you'll kind of make it through an entire day on one charge. And since we are talking about charging, the phone supports fast charging as well. So it would only take you about two hours or just under two hours to fully charge this phone from zero to a hundred. As for performance, well, I can't really complain if I take into consideration the price of the phone. So for the price of the phone, I think it performs very, very well, even with that um, MediaTek 6750T. Even though the phone is not the fastest when opening apps, if you're patient enough, um, once an app is loaded, it does seem to work very, very good. So for example, Chrome, there are no issues whenever you're scrolling up, scrolling down, zooming in, zooming out, or anything like that. On the YouTube app, the maximum resolution is 1080p, which is the resolution of the screen, and all the videos that you are going to watch at that resolution do work very, very good as well. The phone is surprisingly good for gaming as well, and I'm very sure that you are going to be able to play most games available in the Google Play Store. I mean, I only played a couple of games on it, but um, both games that I played did work um, quite good. We also have a good GPS unit that only takes a couple of seconds to find your location, and of course, using Google Maps or Waze or anything like that works without um, any issues. Moving on to connectivity, well, the phone can connect to 4G networks and that's a plus. However, we don't have dual band Wi-Fi or NFC, but I wasn't actually expecting to find NFC on this phone. But leaving that aside, the speeds that I got over 4G and over the 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi bands are appropriate. Moving on to the operating system. So we have Android 7 running on this device with Gliago's own skin on top of it, which is not that close to stock Android as we've seen in the past for other um, Chinese manufacturers. However, the skin is not that bad, so it doesn't uh, seem to slow the phone down. Scrolling in between screens and even multitasking works quite good and better than I was expecting considering we only have 3 gigs of RAM and that MediaTek 6750. So overall, the UI is not bad. So to conclude this video, I can't really say that this is a bad phone because we have to take into consideration the price and the price is $110 and for $110, well, there will be some compromises. Now, if you don't want to compromise, you're going to have to spend more money, but that's the same with pretty much everything. All right, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did like it, press that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.